Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have the comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Well, our listener support campaign continues, and I want to thank everyone for their support. Um, among those uh, supporting uh, this listener ca- uh, support campaign are Frank and Eileen and... Uh, uh, Mirth, uh, thanks so much for your support. And we'll send along access to the premium site, which we do with all donations of $7 or more. And we'll also send an additional thank you for all donations of $20 or more, plus a uh, free digital copy of all I needed to know I learned from Colombo. Among those items available at the $20 level, we have Perry Mason radio dramas adapted from the original novels by Earl Stanley Gardner. And uh, we have the uh, books, the uh, Johnny Dollar books by John Abbott, examining uh, every episode script he could uh, find uh, to fill in the gaps and to really give a detailed look at the series. And uh, you can have your choice of volumes one, two, or three, each covering a different historical period. Uh, the, for a donation of $100 or at a donation of $250, we'll send you all three volumes. A full list of available items is at support.greatdetectives.net. Now it's time uh, to uh, continue on with uh, our new Johnny Dollar adventure. It's time for The Plantagenet Matter, parts one and two. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Mr. Costello at the Plantagenet Hotel in Vicksburg, Virginia. You left word? Oh, yes, Mr. Costello. I'm acting for Eastern Seaboard Casualty Insurance. You know, investigation. Oh? I understand you had a burglary down there. We sure did, Mr. Dollar. Well, the main reason I wanted to talk to you, Mr. Costello, was to let you know I'm getting the first plane out of Hartford as soon as the weather clears. Uh, You're coming here to Vicksburg? Yes, that's right. Eastern Seaboard Casualties asked me to investigate the burglary for them. Good. Then I'll expect you when I see you. And I'll be there. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Chief Accountant, Eastern Seaboard Casualty Insurance Company, Providence, Rhode Island. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the plant agent matter. Expense account item one, two dollars, cab fare, my apartment to the Hartford airport. Item two, one hundred seventy-three dollars. One airline ticket from Hartford to Vicksburg, Virginia, and back again. We took off in ten below zero weather about one thirty in the afternoon. By five o'clock, we circled into Vicksburg for a landing. Item three, five dollars, care fare, to the Plantagen Hotel, three miles outside of town. A pleasant, spacious, gentle old building set back among the wintry trees. Fifteen minutes after checking in, Mr. Costello appeared, wrung my hand, and reported that the Vicksburg police had apprehended the burglar who had rifled the hotel safe the night before. All of the loot had been recovered. As a matter of form, I spent two hours with the police itemizing the stolen property, which was all intact. Then I returned to the hotel, assured Mr. Costello that everything would be all right, and got busy trying to make return reservations for Hartford. Now, the rest of this report is by way of apology for my tardiness in submitting the expense account. In between phone calls to the airport, I went downstairs to the bar for a drink, and then stepped outside for a walk and a breath of fresh air. In the back of the parking lot behind the hotel, a blonde woman, about 30, in a green suit, was talking to a tall, typically dark man who had his back to me. They were arguing about something. As I walked past them, I couldn't help hearing too well. Please, please help me. Are you talking to me? Yes, please. On your way, mister. This is private. 
You hear me? <laughs> Just keep your hands to yourself, bud. Well, keep rolling, then. We're having a little argument, private. Please, please, I don't know who you are, but I'm... Shut up. She's uh, had a little too much to drink, mister, that's all. Oh, that's so? Well, it doesn't look that way to me. Now, what's this all about? I just told you, Nosy, she's had a little too much to drink. Now, go on, bud, get on your way. Wait a minute, I told you to keep your hands to yourself. Yeah. (laughs) You! You! Honey, you want to keep it up? You hear me? Yes, I hear you. And I... I'll let it go this time, mister. Just this once. Do you want to have him hauled in, miss? Oh, no. No, that's all right. It's all right. Okay, then, okay. Come on, beat it, you. Now, listen, Beat it, I said. She's tired of you, and so am I. Go on, beat it. Okay. Just remember, Amy, I was only trying to talk some sense into you. So long, hero. Thanks. Thank you very much. That was awfully kind of you. Okay, did he hurt you? Yes. Where it hurts the most, I guess. I'll never get accustomed to being disappointed in people. Oh, well, he didn't look like your type anyhow. So why don't you just... Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, hey, look now. This is just the end of everything. Everything. Yeah, I I know maybe it looks that way, but, but maybe it isn't. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry to have caused you all this trouble. That's okay. It must look rather cheap and dingy. I mean, I don't know what I mean. Well, look, uh, let me ask you something. Did you really have too much to drink tonight? No. No, I only had one drink with him. All right, then maybe you'll let me buy you one. How about it? You're very kind. You look like you should be with someone for a little while right now. So what do you say? How about it? You're a very kind man. And that's the way it began. In the parking lot outside of the Plantation Hotel in Vicksburg, Virginia. She trembled a little when I led her back inside to the warmth of the bar and the people and sat her down at a booth. Looking back on it now, I guess we had a rather strained, one-sided conversation. She did all the listening and seemed preoccupied with her problems, whatever they were. Even though I'm not the greatest wit in the world, I did manage to get a faint smile out of her. It was a nice smile from a warm, frank mouth. Item four, two drinks for us. <laughs> That's cute. Hey, see there? Next thing you know, you'll be telling me a joke. Oh, that reminds me. That reminds me of another one. It's, uh, it's one of the oldest and most respected jokes in the country. You've probably heard it a thousand times. It seems ten men were standing in the rain under an umbrella, and none of them got wet. Well, just about then, a fellow walked up. You... You've been very, very kind to me. Thank you again. Well, I'm... I'm glad you feel better, Miss, uh... Are you, uh, from here in Vicksburg? No, my home's in Hartford, Connecticut. I flew down here this afternoon on business. I'm waiting for a flight out. Oh. What's your name? Johnny Dollar. Thank you again, Johnny Dollar. Hmm? Thank you for not asking me my name. For not asking me about the man in the parking lot. For not asking me to explain what my trouble is. Thank you, Mr. Dollar. And thank you for sitting here with me this little while and trying to make me laugh. Hmm. You really feel all right now, huh? Yes, I think so. Good, that's well. Because I wouldn't want to let you go if I thought you were going to step outside and start crying again. No. No, I won't do that. I promise. You sure? Positive. Okay. Ah, you want one more for the road? Oh, thank you, but I'd better not, Mr. Dollar. I really should be getting home. Well, uh, will everything be all right at home? What? Oh, oh, yes. He wasn't my husband or my boyfriend, even. He won't bother me. Okay, then. Here, let me help you on with your coat. Thank you. There you are. you have a car? No, I'll get a cab. There's always one out in front. Good, I'll help you. Thank you. Say, uh, look, I'm going to tell you something. I'm staying here in Vicksburg at the plantation, and I doubt if I'll be able to get a plane out tonight. Probably not until tomorrow sometime. So, look, if you need me for any reason at all, why don't you just call me? Okay? Yes. 
Thank you. Good. Cab, taxi. You're still worried about him, aren't you? Why do you say that? The way you looked around when we stepped outside here just now. Would you like me to see you home? Oh, no. no, thank you. You've done enough already. And about him, I made a mistake, that's all. Oh, we all make mistakes, so forget about it. Well, I'm afraid this one can't be corrected very easily. But here's my cab. Good night, Mr. Dollar. Good night. You and I will probably never meet again. But I shan't forget your kindness. Thank you. Okay, good night. Downtown, please. I hope you have a nice trip home, Mr. Dollar. Hey. Oh. Whoa, driver, hold it. Hey, anything wrong? What is it? I don't know. I have the strangest feeling. Wait a minute, driver. Hey, look, do you feel all right? You're shivering. Yes, I... I know I... Oh, it hurts. Oh, what, what hurts? It hurts. I didn't think he... What, what is it? What can I do? Help me. Please, Mr. Dollar. Help me. Let's go, driver. She fell back across the seat of the cab, writhing with pain. I took her in my arms and tried to find out what it was. But by that time, she wasn't able to speak. In another ten seconds, she was unconscious. The cab driver delivered us to an emergency hospital five minutes later. They carried her in through the ambulance entrance. I let the driver go and waited around the desk to see if I could learn what happened. Just waited. Vicksburg emergency. Waited. One moment, please. Go ahead, please. Vicksburg emergency. Not at this time of the night, sir. You'll have to call first thing in the morning. I'd suggest any time after 7.30. Yes, sir. Yes? Hey, uh, look, would it be all right to go back and talk to the doctor now? I'm afraid not, sir. Well, could you bring him out here? I've been waiting for quite... I'm sure he'll be out in a very short while. He knows you're waiting to talk with him. I thought maybe he forgot me. No, sir. I just want to make sure she's all right. The doctor will be out. Vicksburg emergency. Just a moment, I'll connect you. Go ahead, please. Has she had many of these attacks, sir? Hmm. Oh, uh, I, I don't know. I just met her. Oh. Well, if you'd like, we could call you at home and let you know how she is. This isn't my home. I'm on my way out of town as soon as I can get a plane. I'll wait. Certainly. Excuse me. Yes, doctor? Yes, he's right here. Yes, sir, thank you. The doctor will see you now, sir. Good, thanks. End of the hall, room 111. Okay, thank you. I don't know what it was or why that hallway looked so long to me. Call it an old-fashioned premonition or what have you. That's what I had walking down the hall to see a doctor about a girl I'd known only a few minutes. There were three people in the room, two doctors in their white clothes and a nurse. I can still see the light burning above their heads, the way they looked tired, exhausted. All three of them had been working very hard. Doctor? Yes? Oh, uh... You're the man who was with her. Yeah, that's right. How is she? When did this happen? About a half hour ago. I put her in a cab at the Plantagen Hotel, and she complained of feeling sick. So I brought her here, but she lost consciousness in the cab. I see. Sit down, please. Oh, why? Some papers we want you to fill out. Just routine. Oh. Your name, please? Johnny Dollar. And she is Mrs. Dollar? No. Oh, I see. Uh, you're a friend of hers, Mr. Dollar. But yes. Look. What is it, Doctor? What's the matter with her? I can't exactly tell you that right now, Mr. Dollar. What? Well, now, wait a minute. Why can't We you... have to contact her family first, Mr. Dollar. This girl is dead. Now, if you're willing to... Picture it. Yourself in my position, I mean. I'd known the girl only a few minutes. I didn't even know her name. Yet somehow I'd become closely involved with her. Too much so, I guess. All I knew about her was that she was someone who had died while asking me to help her. Under the circumstances, what would you do? (laughs) 
Johnny Dollar. Are you the Mr. Dollar from Hartford? That's right. Who's this? Jim Akins, Vicksburg Police Department. I'm sending a car over to pick you up, Mr. Dollar. Some questions I want to ask you about that young lady you were with last night. I hope you weren't planning on leaving town. Of course I wasn't. I canceled my plane reservations last night. If you tell me where you're located, I'll come down by myself. No sense getting head up. You aren't in your own backyard now, you know, Dollar. I know where I am, the town where a girl died in my arms. If you can stop getting lazy with me for a minute, maybe you can tell me who she was. Why? Because I'd like to talk to her family. I was the last one to see her alive. Who is she? We haven't identified her yet. To us, she's still Jane Doe. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. Location, Vicksburg, Virginia. To... (laughs) To Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the plantation matter. A real mystery about a very mysterious girl who happened to be dead. Expense account item five, ten cents, one morning newspaper, which carried a two-inch story and a half-inch space about an unidentified girl who had died at Vicksburg Emergency Hospital the previous evening. I was reading it over in the lobby of the Plantagen Hotel when one of the Vicksburg police force stepped up to the desk and asked for my room number. He was a swarthy man in a black suit, plain clothes type. Well? I beg pardon? I'm Johnny Dollar. Oh. Jim Akins. We talked on the phone a little while ago. You said you were sending a car. Well, you sounded so huffy about everything, I thought I'd drop over myself to say hello. I got the car outside. Okay, okay, let's go then. Where are you from, Dollar? Hartford, Connecticut. I'm an insurance investigator. Look, I talked to a man in your burglary division yesterday about the burglary they had at the hotel yesterday. I was sent down here by Eastern Seaboard Casualty Insurance Company. You got any identification on you? Yeah, sure. Here. Okay. Look like who you say you are. Now, just what was your connection with that girl who died at the emergency hospital? I met her outside in the parking lot last night, back at this hotel. She was with a man. I don't know who he was. They were having an argument. I stopped when she asked me to help her. I, uh, I got rid of the man and took her inside here and bought her a drink. Then I started to put her in a cab to send her home. But she got sick before the cab could take off, so I took her to the hospital. She died there. And that, Mr. Akins, is it. How long did you know her? About a half hour, all told. She didn't tell you her name? No. Where she lived? No. Hmm. Name of this man she was with in the parking lot, who was he? I haven't the slightest idea. Well, what kind of trouble was she having with him? She didn't tell me that either. I didn't ask her. But you sat in the cocktail lounge over there and you had a drink or two. One. One. No name, no address, no nothing. Well, maybe we better do all our talking downtown. Anything you say, Higgins. Let's go. Higgins turned out to be a lieutenant, and it took him the whole ride downtown to thaw out and make up his mind that I was just as concerned about what had happened to the unidentified girl as he was. He rephrased, but asked me the same questions in front of a stenographer when we got down to his office. He was still asking me questions when he led me and the police stenographer to the basement of the building, the morgue. And she didn't say anything to you about herself before she collapsed, huh? No. All I know is what I've told you. You're sure? Positive. Hey, look, let me ask you one. I've put up with yours for over an hour now. (laughs) Why, sure. What killed her? Yeah. Well, do you know? No, we're still trying to find out. What did you talk about while you were having a drink with her? She asked me for help, that's all. It seems she needed somebody else to do the talking at the time, so I did it. I made jokes and tried to get her to laugh. I was a great big cut-up. Get sawed me if you want it. It won't do much good. Still got some things to find out. Yeah. Lousy, ain't it? It sure is. This is the girl you were with last night. Yes. You're positive. I'm positive. Okay, Dolly, you want to sign this for the records? Well, that's. That's good. All right, Sam, you can send this on upstairs. We'll be up pretty soon. Now, Dollar, did anyone there at the hotel bar seem to know her? I don't know. Cocktail waitress, somebody like that? I don't know. Well, I do. We asked around. No one there had ever seen in the Plantagen Hotel before. Tell me something, Dolly. You ever worked on one like this? 
No, not quite. Okay, then. I'm going to tell you what we're up against. All the clothes she was wearing was standard brand stuff. Mostly come from stores downtown, some of them New York. It's going to take us a long time to check them out. We may not be able to trace them at all. We're going to work on the cleaning marks, too, and that'll take time. Now, from what you say and from what she said, and that wasn't much, she's probably a local girl. Somebody's wondering about her, but nobody come in and make out a report asking for her. I hate to do it. I might have to take a picture, run it in tonight's paper, just to find out who she is. That could be pretty lousy for somebody. It's a lousy business. I thought you could help me, Dollar. How? Well, two things. One, that bird she was with. He was arguing with out in the parking lot, you say. That meant he must have had a car out there. But you didn't bother to take a look at it. No, no, I didn't. And another thing now, where's her purse? I don't know. Well, she must have powdered her nose when she sat down to have that drink with you. Every woman does. She must have reached for a cigarette or something in that purse. So where is that purse? I don't know. Well, now, you see? You see how much help you are to me? Oh, just a second. Morg, Lieutenant Akins. Oh, yeah, put him on. While Lieutenant Akins talked on the telephone, I lit a cigarette. After that, I tried to interest myself in a calendar that was hanging on the wall. After that, I tried tying both shoelaces. But wherever my eyes roved around that white-tiled room, somehow, they always came back to rest on the quiet, still form of the girl who'd asked me for help. By any standard, she was attractive. Fine, golden hair spun out of smooth white skin. I remember her eyes had been very big and very brown. Now they were closed. But she looked more asleep than, than what she was. She looked as though she might wake up any minute and answer me if I said out loud what I was saying to myself silently. How can I help you? Let's get out of here, Dollar. Okay by me. That was the lab on the phone. Had a little trouble with analysis. What analysis? What kind of trouble? Identifying. They called in a toxicologist from the university. A drug called perimythol killed her. Perimythol? That's a new one on me. Yeah, me too. Petrol-based stuff. Now, they figured it'd been in her stomach an hour or so before she collapsed. Could be a suicide, judging from the way she acted and talked to you. What about the boyfriend? Well, that seems to fit in okay. Told you she was disappointed in him, didn't she? Well, sometimes women want to end it all in front of a guy they're having trouble with. It'll probably turn out that Oh, way. you talk like a cop, Akins. That's what I Everything's am. Everything's so simple. Make it fit into your formula. This girl knocked herself off because she lost her boyfriend. This girl killed herself because she lost a job. Fill it in, fill it in. Get it off the whoa, books. Whoa, Dollar, whoa. What's the matter with you? What are you getting at? Oh, Oh, I don't know. Forget it, will you, Lieutenant? No, now, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. I'm not all cop, Dollar. I saw her laying there, too. And I can see she was a nice girl. And something went awful wrong with her. If I'd been the last one to be with her and talk to her alive, why, I'd probably be taking it the same way you are. But take it easy. Sorry, Lieutenant. Yeah. I'll buy you some breakfast. He did... But it didn't help much. And after that, we shook hands and parted. Expense account item six, two dollars. Cab fare back to the Plantagen Hotel. I went up to my room, packed my bags, called the airport, and made arrangements to leave on the six o'clock plane. There was nothing more I could do about the case. Nothing more at all. It was police business. I had time before the plane for a quiet drink at the hotel bar. What's your pleasure, sir? Oh, some of that little water. Yes, sir. You, uh, you on duty last night by any chance? Yes, sir. Why you ask? I just wondered if you happen to remember me. No, sir. Uh, uh, were you at the bar? At that table over there with a lady, a blonde girl in a green suit. Well, I'm sorry. I just don't remember. Well, here you go. Thanks. Here. Keep the change. Well, thank you, sir. Now, I probably waited on you, but, well, uh, so many people, you know. Yeah, sure. Uh, why you ask? The lady lost her purse. Thought maybe it might have been turned in here. No, sir. We didn't get any places last night. Uh, a couple of money clips is all. <laughs> yeah, not much in them, either. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're talking about the lady who died later on, ain't you, sir? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Uh, 
police officers was in here asking the same questions. I thought they would be. You a uh, policeman, too? No, I was a friend of hers. Oh. Well, uh, then you should call the police. They're still trying to find out her name. So am I. Hmm? Well, I thought you said she was a friend of yours. I didn't happen to know her name. It didn't seem important to ask it last night. I just don't understand. I can tell you one thing. I might have saved her life if I'd asked her name. And some other things. Uh, yes, sir. Sure. Expense account item seven, three dollars, three drinks. I sat there for almost an hour talking to the bartender. Once, when he stepped out to the kitchen, I went over to the booth where I'd sat the night before with the unidentified dead girl. I searched down in the cushions, behind the table, under the chairs, hoping the missing purse might still be around. I found nothing. Then I had another idea. I left, went out to the parking lot where I'd first seen her. Got your car, mister? No, I don't have one. Oh, well? Hey, look, uh, last night I was out here with a lady. I, I met her and a man here in the parking lot, uh, about over there where that Chevy is. Uh-huh. So what? Well, the lady lost her purse last night. I just wondered if it, it might have been lost out here someplace. Well, it might have been. Nobody turned anything into me. Want to take a look? Sure, good. All right. About what time last night? Oh, around 10, maybe a few minutes after. Uh-huh. A lot of cars in and around that time of night. Did you look last night? Oh, I didn't know it was missing until this morning. Oh. About here, you say, huh? Here's the Chevy. Yeah. Well, let's take a look. Yeah, make it a good one. Yeah. Well, hey! I think you're in luck. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, here's a purse. Hey, <laughs> you're in real luck. Is that hers? It was hers, all right. A green suede purse, the same color as the green suit she'd been wearing. It still carried the faint, sweet odor of her perfume as I remembered it. I looked inside, but there was nothing to tell me her name. Lipstick, comb, a ten-dollar bill, and some small change. And one other item. A thirty-two automatic, recently fired. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a dead girl's 38 automatic comes to life. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by John Dawson. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure and join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. Welcome back. Um, uh, definitely starting out to be a very personal case that uh, is a bit of a break from the uh, insurance, uh, almost uh, procedurals we've had uh, so far, uh, with a lot more of a uh, of a just a personal angle. And uh, like I said, this seems like it'll be a very different type of case. So we're we'll looking forward to parts three and four. Uh, we do have uh, one uh, listener a comment via email. Uh, Joan uh, emails in, and uh, she asked regarding episode 1027, the uh, Koi Bono matter, 
Uh, there was the salesman in ladies uh, ready to wear. The man's voice I heard many times, and I keep on thinking, it is Howard McNair who played Floyd the Barber on the Andy Griffith Show on TV. Am I right? He had a distinct voice, one that's hard to miss. You know, I thought Johnny was giving up a little too soon on this case. Um, uh, between uh, when along came the salesman and gave it the finishing touch. Uh, the uh, salesman was indeed Howard McNair, who, uh, if you uh, from television, is best known as Floyd the Barber, but really was one of those key character actors. And we've heard him uh, a lot of times, I think particularly on uh, Let George Do It, uh, as well as Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. He managed to create a lot of great uh, supporting characters and really was just uh, invaluable in the days of radio. All right, well, that will do it for today. We will be back tomorrow with uh, our next uh, serial, Murder and Mr. Malone, and then join us back here on Wednesday as the Plantagenet matter continues. In the meantime, send your comments to Box13 at greatdetectives.net. Uh, from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.